All right, so summers are on the way and my MD PC I built in winter it has a stock cooler which was barely working fine in winter and will just not work fine in summer. I do 3D rendering so my CPU goes through a lot of stress. I want to keep my PC super chill below 80C. So I bought an Oracle cooler for this CPU, Asus Stuff 240mm cooler. I wanted to install a large size air cooler but I have a very tall RAM. So it's not possible here. Hence AIO did it. First, we will do unboxing and inspection. You don't want a damaged cooler in your PC. So this is thermal So this is Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme Pass. I bought it separately. It's from seller. It doesn't come free with this cooler. I was running out of old pass so I decided to buy a new one. This is very expensive one, but any regular thermal pass will work fine. Just avoid cheap ones. So here is the cooler. Let's inspect it carefully and see if there is any damage or something. Be very careful here. This is pre-applied thermal paste. Apply cover, apply cover on it so you don't accidentally mess it up. If you are using a super cheap cooler and it has pre-applied thermal paste, I recommend changing it with yours. These are RGB and power connectors. There is a very very minor dent here, but it's nothing, this cooler is fine. These are the screw holes, they are on both sides, one side you insert fans, other side you insert screws to hold it in the case. So I have AMD CPU and I will be needing a M4 bracket to hold this cooler. But when you are watching this, M5 socket may be out. AMD said cooler from M4 socket will be compatible with AM5 socket but still do your check because they announced it but they might change their mind later. So double check it when buying your cooler. Enter bracket we don't need this as I have AMD port. Some screws these ones are for connecting bracket with water pump. Two in one fan connector, you plug one in CPU connector and other side connect with fan connectors on fans. RGB connectors for both fans and screws for connecting fans to radiator and to case. Both fans with two connectors, one is power, other is RGB. First I will connect the metal holder. Just insert and carefully twist so it's properly inserted. Now let's connect the plastic holder. It will properly connect the bracket to the pot. It just clamps on it, just requires a little care. Let's connect fans to radiator. Make sure it's set in such a way that it throws hot air outside PC. Don't tighten it too hard. Let's remove this old cooler. Make sure to clean the CPU from old paste. I am using isopropyl alcohol. You can find it in medical stores and its pads are also available. You can also use contact cleaner. You may want to remove these holders depending on cooler you have. If you are confused, you can easily find out to remove or not by looking at bracket or read manual that comes with it if you are confused for some reason.
let me guide you properly about connectors here. Let's start with cheap motherboard which most of people use. For AIO water coolers, connect the pump to CPU fan connector and both fans to system fan connector using 2-in-1 or 3-in-1 instructions. They usually come free with your rent. Then simply go to manufacturer website and install fan control app and set the system fan speed control to CPU. Now let's go to mid-range motherboards. This is my motherboard. It has two CPU fan connectors. The CPU plus OPT connector is specially designed for water pumps. So use that to connect water pump. This is a very very expensive motherboard. While it has CPU plus OPT for pumps specially, it also has additional pump connectors on site which you can use. If you are confused about your motherboard, simply check your board manual. It has all the info on all connectors on your board. That will help you decide. I am only using 4 screws to hold this red, no need to use all screws. And it's on. Ok so now I am on my desktop. This is the system information viewer. Now I'm gonna put 100% load on my PC and see how well it goes. This is the fan curve I set for now. Maybe I will change it later but this is how I set it for now. Let's see what kind of uh, temps do we get. Right now room temperature is around 35C. So let's see how things go. But let's see. Okay, render started. Okay, so more than a minute has passed right now. And uh, it's not going above 77C. So I think we have our final result. This thing, I wanted a cooler that can keep my CPU under 80C, which is a very decent temperature. And uh, this cooler works great in that regard. So yeah, it's a success. 80C below 80C. But just keep in mind. If your CPU goes above 80C, while it's hot, it's not that much of a problem. Your CPU can handle it. But if it touches 90C, then you need to worry about it. It's time to buy a new CPU cooler. So this is how you install a CPU water cooler, AIO water cooler. And if you have found this video useful, please like because it tells YouTube that this video is useful. And don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel out. And if you want to ask anything, just uh, comment and I will try to answer all questions and see you guys again.